for the Emperor. Ah, how sweet the sound of these words. Makes you just wanna pick your bolter and purge Xenos. And I don't mean Mexicans or the French in this instance. Oh no, in this wonderful game, we're taking a break from killing each other and stand united against the might of aliens. Murder away, son. Make the Emperor proud. If you ask me if this game is worth it, I would give it my 100% recommendation. But with a few caveats. You see, gaming journalists are hating the game for some reason, calling it repetitive and not fun. I disagree wholeheartedly. Brother, Space Marine 2 walks among us. Rejoice, for it is everything you've ever wanted. Anywho, Space Marine 2 is a sequel to Space Marine, where you play as a Space Marine in space as a Marine. That's the gist of the game. If it's too complicated to understand for you, just remember these two easy steps to beat the game. Aim your mouse and press the left button to unlock the enemies of your Emperor. General impressions? Well, this game feels and plays like something from the late 2000s and early 2010s. In a good way. By that, I mean the ever-present need for a game to have a single-player campaign, a co-op mode, and a multiplayer PvP mode all in one go. We shall unpack every module, so don't close the video just yet. Don't, don't, don't close it. So, what can you expect from a Warhammer video game? Um, how should I say this? Have you ever seen the movie Commando or Predator? And during the screening of those movies, did you feel your muscles grow and lust for blood rise? It's kind of like that, but in space, where everything is a million times worse. We've got buffed macho man dudes, action through the roof, top quality schlock, threat to whole humanity, and blood and gore to satisfy your kinks. It's honestly too great to exist, but somehow it does. It makes me a better man. It makes me more manly and grow hair around my nipples. Makes me want to pledge my soul to the eternal servitude for the emperor of mankind. The art style of Space Marine 2 is simply breathtaking. The visuals are a treat at any angle you look at them. Watching Tyranid Swarm consume everything is a sight to behold. This is truly the grim darkness of the far future where there is only war and also hammer. Everything looks just amazing. I'm running out of descriptive words here, but iridescent warp, bombastic blast of cannons, gorgeous and deadly looking spaceships, Amazing visuals of your armor and weaponry, and the lighting. Oh, the lighting. It's just fantastic. It's kind of like seeing a naked body of your preferred sex for the first time. That visual image will never let you go. And neither will this one. Get this. The game doesn't even have a map to speak of. No collectibles either. This isn't Doom. There are no plushies. Only war. But there are data slates that can be listened to, like a mixtape you made for your loved one. They give you a better understanding of what's happened. But, I mean, duh, Tyranny invasion. We all know what happened. But listening to Akkadian soldier or a tech priest speak their techno babble is super enjoyable. Anyway, no secrets to speak of. The only thing you can get from multiple dead ends are supplies, rare weapons, medkits, and other relics. Good news, right? Combat in this game is as ruthless as you can imagine. It fully demonstrates the brutality of 41st millennium, where you're at war with pretty much everything. You got two range and one melee weapon, more than enough to prove who's right and who's a steaming pile of biomass. You've got to be careful though, your armor isn't as tough as it looks. On higher difficulties, a few hits are enough to send you in the game over screen. There's also dodge, parry and repost, all work in your favor, restoring armor so that you won't die a little longer. And as for health, well, shit, you lucked out. Have you ever played Bloodborne? Well, what you can do is restore portions of your HP by quickly attacking back. If that's not an option, then you need to find the ever-precious Stims or use the ultimate ability. But don't let me dissuade you, Space Marine 2 rewards aggressive playstyle. After all, you've got armor regen mechanic and a well-timed counter will not only be devastating, it will allow you to use your ultimate ability, which restores HP and makes you unstoppable. Each enemy acts and moves differently. Even small fries can take you on, like we're in Earth Defense Force series, and bosses... Holy shit, the bosses in this game are fan-fucking-tastic. Every fight with them is a dance of death you'll never forget. And I'm going to catch some flack for this, but they remind me of bosses from Dark Souls series. Changing tactics as they lose health, and you're always just a few hits away from KO. 
Well, what you need to know about the campaign is that it lasts about 8 hours, which is way longer than any of us, right? It's linear because the choices are made by the Emperor, you just need to act upon them. And by the end of the game you'll be wanting more, that's for sure. I'm not going to badmouth the game, it deserves every praise it gets. The devs clearly had passion for the source material, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So any Warhammer fan worth a damn should enlist and eliminate Xenos pronto. Caveat number one is, I would really like a vehicle mission. They have cutscenes with them, but at no times do you play Carmageddon with Tyranids. Which is a shame, because Road Rage is probably how you're going to go out of this life if you live in India or Southeastern Asia. So I wanted to experience it just this once, but from a POV of a buffed homosexual angel. Four levels of difficulty is what we have in this majestic game. Be warned though, like I said, the story is linear, there is no reason to replay it except for achievements and that fleeting feeling of adrenaline rush. Now what you want to replay is operations, which are kinda like side missions you can play alone or with your friends. They include not one, not two, not three, but six different classes you can enjoy playing as. That's right baby, Demetrian Horsecock Titus now can become whatever you want him to be, just like that college girlfriend with borderline personality disorder. So from the coolest class of chonky bulwark to the shittiest class of all, Assault, the game got you covered. Unlike the campaign where your arsenal is varied, most of these classes have a narrow selection of weapons. But they get special abilities to help you slay some puss puss. What's more is that your ass gets to customize your space marine armor, and you can create three different weapon loadouts to handle everything the world can toss in your way. Feeling like getting a classic combo of cheeseburger, fries and coke? Pick tactical for he can wield all sorts of weapons. Even the dildo weapon from that cyberpunk game. Man, what a good game it turned out to be. Or feel like you want to unreasonably punish yourself and be the worst not just in life but in this game too? Assault is right up your alley, you piece of human garbage. If you play Vika Thief in RPGs, I got just the feller for you. He can go invisible, so female communal showers is where you can find him. He shoots his load incredibly far, his eyesight somehow wasn't destroyed from watching all that Futanari inflation porn. His name? Sniper. Whoa, grappling hooks? Man, I love those in XCOC, I mean XCOM. Choose Vanguard to do aerial tricks with your trusty hook, just don't end up like David Carradine. Or you wanna be the coolest motherfucker that has a growth spurt in the first grade and toss children around? Pick Bulwark, he's got the shield that can protect you from the female attention. And lastly, if you play Team Fortress 2, you already know his name. Heavy Weapon Sky. Enough said. And that's all I can tell you about operations and classes. Well, that and the fact that there's a farming-like progression to get new skills and stuff. And before you get excited, let me tell you, don't. The progression is excessively grindy and feels bad, because there aren't enough maps to get your blood pumping. It is redundant and gets repetitive real fast. So my advice, don't chase the progression dragon, it's not worth it. Just enjoy operations for what it is, plus the devs promised to bring us more maps in the mix, so that's also great. Everyone has already heard about the co-op feature of this game, but how does it actually work? Well, I can say that the main campaign has an excellent integration of existing cooperative modes that allow you to play the main campaign and operations with up to two friends. If you don't have them, like I don't, you're at the mercy of AI companions who aren't that smart to begin with. Just like real friends, huh? And for completely insane people who want to return to the glory years of late 2000s and early 2010s when they still have their hairline, there's a mode called Eternal War. It's a 6 vs 6 PvP arena match between Space Marines and Chaos. Isn't that wonderful? You can play both, so if you're secretly a Chaos boy like many of us, now is the time to unleash the Horus Heresy onto the enemy that is blinded with faith to his has-been human emperor. That's just great. I love playing as baddies. And oh boy, since we're talking about PvP. Right, so this is a true blast from the past kind of deal here, man. This is LAN party territory, where you assembled a group of friends and went to a computer club or to your friend's home. This here is why I love Unreal Tournament so much. The chaos, the fire, the gore, the split second decisions that make or break your erection. It's all there for you to experience. However, another caveat that I can't help but mention is that the game currently has only a few maps with three game modes, so the content is blue balling us pretty hard. But sometimes, just sometimes, the lack of content is a good thing. Uh, hear me out. 
this fantastic game is so far up the late 2000s ass that it doesn't have any daily missions, no limited events bullshit, no microtransactions, you just get in and play it, you dingus. Now, now, it wouldn't be fair to list only the positives, so I am including the negatives as well. How should I say this without angering people who collect expensive plastic? This game has, um, lore inaccuracies, I guess? Which is surprising, given how well the game is received and how faithfully it follows the art style. But anyhow, the lowest tyranny should not survive a bolter shot. And it takes a whole magazine to vanquish a warrior species. That is, what you might call it, a flagrant misunderstanding of the technical specs of the weapon. Not only that, but the spread of bolter shouldn't be so wide, goddammit. This is something that could have been easily avoided if somebody would just read the goddamn books. But then again, who the fuck is reading anything in 2024, am I right? We should be happy that the devs weren't inspired by Warheim and TikToks, right? Eh, not even going to touch the plasma weapons. Just, just don't. So beware, what you read in the books will not be found in this otherwise awesome game. But still, think about it. Books and video games cannot be the same. They just can't. If we get a lore accurate bolter that would one shot everything, we'd get a fucking Diablo clone gameplay where you just one click the enemy and send it to the past tense. Now, is that satisfying? Does that require strategizing? Nope. No, 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 no. You'd breeze through the already short campaign and not feel the intense notion of disgust as you pray hot holy lead into Xena's faces if they have those. I'm not sure. It would not be a satisfying game because it would be a Call of Duty campaign on easy difficulty. The worst kind of action game known to man. Another thing I noticed is the gross imbalance between ranged and melee attacks. Some enemies are just plain ass to kill from afar, but they melt like butter if you decide to give them a what's called an Astarte smooch. Just imagine, a game that puts an emphasis on melee combat where you're supposed to do Columbine in a Tyranid school for gifted biomass. How am I supposed to feel about that? You know how crowd shooters like Payday 2 and Left 4 Dead prioritized ranged weapons instead of melee? Do that! With occasional hand-to-hand -hand execution done by Demetrius Little Nuts Titus. Or fuck it, make it a quick time event in boss fights, but don't you dare go undermining my melee and plasma weapons, you fucks. Now, PvE is the bread and butter of this game. This is where you find customization and replayability. It does have its limits, I admit. So let's do some unfair comparisons. It doesn't have gunplay the likes of Dark Tide or endless replayability of Left 4 Dead. This is a linear experience that does have randomized hordes and stuff, but it's all very linear experience anyway. Like very linear, even your dick has curves. This game has none. Don't get me wrong, I compared the game with Payday and L4D as if I slammed it, but that's not true at all. Quite the opposite, you will get a kick from a variety of builds and classes. It's just that progression is largely cosmetic or gives you rather small stat buffs. Another comparison, Borderlands. You do know what I'm going to talk about, right? It's the guns. I'm afraid to admit it, but the Emperor's arsenal is rather... Underwhelming. It's limited, but just like using dick pills before the show, with some hemming and hoeing, you can make it work which may bring you dozens of hours of variety in gunplay. Notice, dozens, not hundreds. Yeah, of course this is an Elden Ring that has 311 weapons and maidens in it, but the big names are there, so you will be satisfied and smiling while spraying hot glue on aliens. No, wait, that's not what I meant, I forgot what hot glue means. <clears throat> Let me tell you, the game is not going to change the industry, but it sure is fun. It will send a signal at least, to all the corpus about what people actually want. I mean, check this out. PC Gamer gave Space Marine 2 the score of 60. 60! They gave Gollum 64. What on earth are they smoking? This is beyond the fucking pale. I know nobody reads gaming journalists, but come on, it's like they have a bone to pick with the Warhammer IP. Or they didn't pass the testosterone test. Who knows? But that's beside the point. The game nails the atmosphere of Tyranid Invasion. That much is true. And I'll let you in on a secret. I vastly prefer Dead Space 2 over the original game. The reason is quite simple. In the sequel, you're witnessing firsthand the invasion of Necromorphs on the space station. It's glorious. You get to see how they're tearing the people apart. You hear their screams and tears compared to the silence 
and occasional creaks of the old machinery on USG Ishimura. It's just great. In the original, you knew you were all alone in space, but in the sequel, there might just be a split second chance you may save somebody. And that's what's great about Space Marine 2. They let you witness all the horrors firsthand. It's not like you're coming late to the Xena party. Oh no, baby, you're the guest of honor, and you arrive just in the nick of time. In time, or barely too late. It's for you to decide. Oh, and if you play the game in German language, and you yourself are a German or an Austrian who's pursuing an arts career, you might get something called the Call of the Blood. Do not, under any circumstances, listen to it. But do enjoy this game in one of the languages that are still banned in the UN. Yippee! Trust me on this one. It is such an enjoyable game. Fuck. I even consider buying a season pass and that's saying something, because I only did it once with Pathfinder and instantly regretted it. With these cats though, I can bet you dollars to donuts that they know they have a good thing going. It's like when you date somebody way out of your league, and you know it. You don't know exactly how you lock down such beauty, but you cherish them. You cherish them long and hard, you magnificent bastard. Games like these only coming once every... 13 years! Holy shit, you can get married in Afghanistan when you're 13 years old. Shit. So, one Afghan wedding ago, we were blessed with Spesh Marine, that showed us how the grimdark future of Warhammer 40k can look like with Dimitri and Chiklis Chaps Titus as the protagonist. It gave us that unmistakable feeling of being a 7 foot armored war beast with a singular purpose of reading the world of Xenos. It was fun, ruthless, brutal and spectacular. And now, we are equally blessed with a continuation of that story with Titus, who's longing for blood. Now let us see where this deadly romp can take us. Unleash the Titan, quell the Tyranid invasion, see beyond the Codex Astartes. Be the hero the Emperor needs. Thanks for watching.